We know that phones and other personal devices can be really distracting for our youth when they're trying to study or do other things. They can get message alerts, notifications from gaming apps, and all sorts of things. Here, Larry Rosen asks us to consider internal distractions. When uncomfortable feelings build up, because someone is missing out on what could be on their device. One of the biggest areas of interest right now is why young kids, teenagers, preteens get so distracted. And there's two ways that they get distracted. One is from the outside. They get an alert on their phone. They got a text message. Their brain is in particularly the front part of their brain that controls their impulses isn't complete yet. It's not completely developed by teenage years, not until the late 20s. And so they almost act a little like Pavlov's dogs. Ding, oh, I got a text, I have to pick up the phone no matter what I'm in the middle of doing. And people have done research on this, ranging from laboratory studies to observations. In the laboratory, they find that if they compare kids who use a lot of technology to kids who use very little technology, kids who multitask a lot versus kids who don't, they find that kids who multitask a lot are not able to ignore irrelevant information in their world. The other thing that happens, though, and we see this in observational studies, is when you go in and observe, say, workers working in an office or students studying, as we've done, that there don't seem to be a lot of interruptions necessarily that come from outside stimuli, but a lot of them come from inside their brain. They're sort of running this message inside their head that says, oh, I better check Facebook. Oh, I better see if somebody texted me. Oh, I better see if somebody commented on my Instagram post. Oh, I better see whatever. And so what they do is they self-distract. And so you've got this sort of balance between external distractions, alerts, notifications, buzzes, beeps, vibrations, versus the internal distractions. The internal distractions are the ones that most interest me because I believe they're controlled by anxiety that what happens to people, and particularly young kids, who are so active on so many electronic communication sites, they're active on Facebook, they're active on all sorts of, of social media sites, they have e multiple email accounts, they text, they're communicating all day. What happens in their brains is there's this sort of buildup of anxiety. And the anxiety is, some people call it FOMO, fear of missing out. They're afraid if they don't check something often enough they're going to miss out or it's this concept that they simply have a drive that says i have to check in really often to feel like i'm part of my virtual world out there my virtual community and we've done studies where we've gone through and looked for example at how kids study and they get distracted about every three minutes and what tends to distract them is thinking about text messages, thinking about Facebook, thinking about other social media that they feel they have to check in on. And that's the critical variable. Yeah, see, the interesting thing is people are now starting to study this. And this study out of Stanford University, for example, where they had, they had wristbands measuring arousal and monitoring when exactly a student shifted from one screen to the next. The interesting thing is if they shifted from an entertainment screen like video or video gaming or Facebook to a work screen, they showed no change in arousal at all. If they switched from a work screen like typing or something to a fun entertainment screen, the arousal started 25 seconds before they shifted. So almost a half a minute before they shift, their brain's already thinking, oh, I really want to play that video game or, oh, I really want to watch that cat video, or, oh, I really want to check Facebook. So their brains are driving this. If you can train the brain that you will get to check in in a specific amount of time, that allows those neurotransmitters to not be leaked into the brain and not cause the person to get anxious. Thank you for watching this video. We publish new videos every week, so if you enjoy this sort of content, please like and subscribe to the channel.